Alright, let's dive into end-stage renal disease. So if you noticed in my last video, I talked about chronic kidney disease. If you didn't have a chance to watch it, go ahead and take a look at it now. You'll probably find it in the description below. End-stage renal disease is chronic kidney disease, except for to the extreme to where the kidneys are no longer functioning, where there's very little function. So uh, it has same, all the same um, risk factors and causes as chronic kidney disease, uh, signs and symptoms. Um, it's just to the extreme. So really what you'll see with these patients is their kidneys aren't, uh, aren't filtering the waste products. So if you look at the labs, they're going to have way too much potassium, magnesium, phosphorus. They're going to have uh, tons of waste. The BUN and cranium will be uh, elevated. Me, myself, I work on a renal floor. When I have one of these patients, their BUN and creatinine is just through the roof at that point. You don't even really monitor it anymore. You start watching the electrolytes more closely and making sure you maintain those. Also, these patients are going to be uh, at risk for fluid overload because they're not uh, filtering out and maintaining their fluid balance because their kidneys aren't producing urine. In fact, people with end-stage renal disease uh, sometimes produce either very little urine or no urine at all. Now, these patients, uh, treatment for these patients uh, typically involves dialysis. Now, there are uh, several varieties of dialysis. Um, the two major would be hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. Uh, today I'll talk a little bit about hemodialysis. And I'm going to have another video you'll see later in this playlist talking just about hemodialysis, care before, after, during, and different types of accesses. So for these patients, you'll want to have them on a renal diet, which is low in potassium, phosphorus, sodium, and magnesium. Sodium because sodium and water go together. So if they have lots of sodium in their diet, they're going to have more fluid staying in their bloodstream and it's going to put them at higher risk for fluid overload. These patients are going to have a fluid restriction. Typically, it says 1,200 to 1,500 cc's per day, and you'll want to be sure that you educate the patient um, regularly to make sure that they stay on those restrict fluid restrictions. They're also going to have medications that are binders, such as phosphorus binders. These are medicines that the patient will take with every meal, and it binds with the phosphorus in the food so that instead of it going into the bloodstream, it is excreted in, um, in their defecation. And dialysis. Now dialysis is what this is going to do is it's going to correct electrolyte imbalances and it's going to pull out the fluid that the patient is no longer able to urinate out. So what do you want to watch out for for end stage renal patients? You want to watch out for their labs going out of whack. And this is uh, shown by them having arrhythmias. If they have too much potassium, they may be having cardiac arrhythmias such as ventricular fibrillation or VTAC. Um, SVT, you want to watch for arrhythmias. Typically, these patients are on a telemetry monitor. You want to watch for hypertension. When they have fluid overload, that's a lot more um, volume that the heart's pumping around, and they may have hypertension. This puts them, of course, at risk for cardiac problems, uh, for stroke. Um, you also want to watch out for angina. If the heart is funk pushing all this extra fluid and the electrolytes are off, the heart is at risk for developing arrhythmias, which may lead to ischemia to the heart, and so the heart, uh, they're at risk for having myocardial infarctions, and so you want to watch out for them complaining of chest pains. Also, the fluid overload could lead to pulmonary edema, which is too much fluid in the body, and then it starts um, depositing itself around the lungs, so when you go to listen to their lungs, you'll be hearing very moist and wet sounds around their lungs, they're having shortness of breath, their oxygen saturations are dropping, and so you want to watch for this. In the case of these, typically they may need um, medication or uh, emergency dialysis. And so I want you to go ahead and take a look if you're interested in hemodialysis. My next video is going to talk about what you actually do with these patients um, on a regular day in the med surge floor, like a renal floor. Um, and this is where I work every day. So I'm going to talk to you about what we're going to do to prepare them for dialysis, what we're going to do once they're actually in dialysis, and then what we do once we get them out.